All right, what's going on, everybody? This is your uh, weekly webinar here from uh, Market Inflections. Uh, I am Sang Lucci, and we have Alex Bernal, Bernal from uh, Market Inflections with us. Um, and so far, so good here. Today, obviously, was a pretty uh, big day in the market. So, obviously, you guys, uh, you guys have been watching. Um, honestly, I didn't think the French elections were that big of a deal. I, I really, I really didn't think so at all. Uh, but we had a pretty nice gap up. There was a lot of call buying for SPY, for IWM, um, and we threw out that free trade for you guys uh, last week. In last week's webinar, we threw out that free trade for you. I'm going to go ahead and set this one up for you. Actually, uh, I'll, I'll, let, uh, uh, I'll let Alex here uh, uh, set you guys up. ES had a big compression. Uh, SPY had a big compression here as well. Um, and it looks like, or are we still a little bit too early on this one? We threw out a straddle for you guys. We said, okay, by the June 235, both sides. Uh, and we kind of have, we kind of had moves in both directions, more or less. But, uh, Alex, is it safe to say here that we're going to extend here the upside or we still need to see some? I mean, if it were me, I'd, I'd be long right here. We have these, uh, little dots that are kind of guides for us. What, what those are is really a, a statistically provable support resistance level. So if you want to be more mechanical, you know, you could you could basically say it has to close above that right. level there, but you know, game of inches, whatever. Right. Um, if you if you do at sign TF uh, on the daily, this was really kind of more the um, the interesting tell because last week. You had uh, Johnson & Johnson, some of the bigger uh, Dow stocks, Goldman Sachs, they sagged, sagged down, and it was sort of giving us this, you know, kind of bearish inkling that these compressions were going to go down, right? I mean, we had a couple people giving me shit. Oh, you first you said down, now it's going up. I mean, again, it's a non-directional indicator, so it doesn't produce a direction for us. It just says we're going to stop going sideways, Right. 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 So, so um, you know, the TF today, you can see closed above that yep. support and resistance level. So my stamp of approval to go long as of the yep. close is really right. is what it is. Right, yeah, and uh, most of my trades, most of my open trades, and we'll go over some of these. Uh, we'll go over some of these right now. Um, it looks like we lost some some data, though, unfortunately. Here, uh, I don't know. Trade Station sometimes. Uh, uh, gives us a couple errors. It just, here it just needs to uh, recenter there. But yeah, if you just if you just like open that. up those graphs. Uh, so uh, one position here that we still have going is the Microsoft, uh, and as you can see, there's still uh, a decent amount of uh, work to be done. I would say still, um, I do have to throw out a monster October risk reversal that was thrown out there today. Uh, so this guy sold uh, basically. Like I want to say, like 1.7 million dollars of 62 and a half puts for October, and then he bought he bought I think he bought like 9,000 of 67 and a half calls on the upside here for October. Actually, he bought 75 calls. He bought the 75 dollar strike. Okay, wow. that's what that's what that's what he ended up buying here on the Microsoft. So Microsoft here just broke out. We actually advise subscribers here to go ahead and pull out. Uh, uh, you know some of the gains here. We had a uh, what was it? Uh, let me let me go ahead and pull this up here. We had the May uh, 65 call uh, for Microsoft here, and we were in we were in at about a dollar seventy or so. I want to say, and I'll go ahead and pull up this call for you right now. Um, and today had a really really nice exit on this one uh, at around three bucks and change. Uh, so if you take a look at this uh, this option right here, we look at it for we've been in it for a while. This one took a this one took a little bit, uh, you know, to make happen. So we were we were in it through all of this nonsense. You know what I mean? So sometimes again, these compressions they take a while here, uh, you know. But you have to make sure you're in these before they happen, guys. And that, and that's one of the big things that we'll always throw out there is that if you get in after the fact, chances are you're gonna buy a gap up. Right where there's not that much leg, uh, you know, left, uh, you know, left on the table per se, and there's still obviously going to be some upside. But you want to be able to come in after a move has already started. You have to be able to come in for the dips, and the dips are going to happen really quickly. 
you know, so if you're not available here to, you know, to pounce on a dip that maybe takes place in about five or ten minutes here, you're not going to get the most ideal cost here. So you want to be sure you're in these things before they happen, uh, and that's one of the one of the one of the big advantages here to using these signals. Um, and again, we do all this science for you here in Turning Point Signals, and we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. So we have the Microsoft trade going on. Uh, I do want to throw out the, I think uh, uh, Bernal here is going to talk about this IBM. Uh, I have, what is this, the Visa? This is the Visa. So I have a, I have a Visa uh, uh, spread going on here as well. Visa already reported earnings. This thing actually printed like 94 in the pre-market off earnings. And that just kind of faded back. MasterCard is still looking good. I'm still looking for more upside here on the Visa. It is kind of trading a little weird here, but I'm so I'm still holding both sides. Uh, Alex, let's say you have a strangle here on a compression here. Uh, when would you? I guess, and we talked about this last week. But when would you recommend? Would you recommend letting go of that put side uh, on a move like this? On, on a move like Visa. Here? I think it depends on where the calls are trading. My my personal rule of thumb is I at least want to try to get ballpark double what I paid for it, right? I mean, that's kind of a rule of thumb with straddles. So depending upon what the options are trading, um, you know, I might I might look. And, and I, I personally, when I take profits in straddles, I'll just take them on both sides. Because, um, again, the, the way that I look at this is it's a – it's a non-directional trade, so if it makes a move that gives me enough profit, I just want to take my money and run from both sides. You know what I mean? Nice, nice, absolutely here. So we're still in the visa here, both sides. I'm still kind of waiting around, seeing uh, seeing what it looks like. We also have a straddle on this IBB, um, and I'm going to go ahead and let Alex talk about this IBB because again, he's stacked up in most of the pharmaceuticals right now. Uh, so Alex, take this one, uh, take this one away here. I, and Biogen, yeah, by the no, way, looks I, to see. Yeah, Why IBB is same, like a kind they, of a perfect. They all look the same. Yeah, they all look the same. You know, again, stripping out the top five in here, uh, even the top six in the pharmaceuticals. This has really been my area of focus. Again, a longer term signal, right? So these weeklies, they take quite a bit to build, and they're going to take a little bit to unfold here. So there's there's kind of a lot of hurry up and wait, but this is the kind of thing that can run. For you know, up to a year in one direction, and I can kind of buy the dips and whatnot. Um, you know, the other things that support kind of my bullish uh, bias is a lot of the big bio caps like uh, Celgene and Bio uh, uh, Biogen. They're they're kind of like extreme growth stocks. So you know, they have a lot of expectations for earnings, and they're you know had a coming off of a tough year last year. A lot of these stocks are kind of the darlings of a lot of these uh, big hedge funds, so they're looking for these things to start moving again, start getting back in them. Um, the daily compression on IBB and XBI is where we're looking at. It hasn't broken out yet. Um, yeah. And yeah. as you guys know, if anybody's traded biotech, these things can really move. I mean, yeah. this thing will go 100 bucks and Three months, you know. Yeah, they're very, they're very illiquid, guys. Uh, that's the one thing I will say about all the bio names, especially the the ones over a hundred dollars, the ones over two hundred bucks. You know, you got the REGN, you got Biogen. Biogen, I remember last year there were so many people. You, you guys see how big this level is, and if you go back two years, you'll even see a gap through this level. So if you look at it just from a technical standpoint, you know, three hundred bucks is a big freaking deal. Anything over three twenty. You're talking stops that are going to get run over, and this is such an illiquid name, similar to a move like Chipotle, uh, you know, which we showcased in a post here. Chipotle had a big uh, weekly compression as well, and you know, finally kind of broke, uh, you know, this, this sort of one two year kind of uh, uh, resistance area, or sort of one year here, uh, at around 450 bucks. Um, you know, so this is also an example of an illiquid name too. So names like Biogen, IBB, all this stuff, these things can really run hard. But again, you have to be in before it happens, all right? If you right. end up getting in a gap on 10 points or 20 freaking points in, in a name like Biogen, you know, you better be really quick. You better be super fast, lightning fast, because that premium is going to come off super fast. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't have to 
you know, any of you guys who trade the biotechs, you know what I'm talking about here. Um, you know, so so definitely. Yeah, you definitely got to be careful. You can't just hit the hit the market order in some of these. Um, you know, uh, Celgene is a good example of just a type of setup that I favor. We've already seen how good weekly compressions are at or near all-time highs. So this is another setup like that where the consolidation has been over two years and the the signal that it's going to start a new trend is very, very close to an all-time high at uh, 130. So when it goes, typically there's nothing up there but air. You know what I mean? So th yep. these things can move quite a bit. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, another one we want to set up here, uh, you know, something that sort of hasn't happened uh, uh, quite yet either, uh, but something that has been really, really uh, interesting. Signals have really shown some good moves uh, off of, uh, you know, uh, off of some of these uh, extensions here, compressions, uh, is oil. And, um, you know, this thing, <laughs> this thing has moved so ridiculously uh, in the past couple weeks. Uh, and very quickly too, as you can see here, this top panned out. We had a huge sell-off here, and now we're getting these bottom extensions. Uh, same thing down here. We were able to get a nice trade off uh, USO from 1020 to about 1060, uh, and then I missed sort of all this upside here. Uh, but these signals have been spot on, uh, you know, for for day trading. Uh, uh, the USO or just holding, let's say, a week position or maybe two weeks position. Uh, so we're always watching here oil. I think if oil starts to come back too, that's that's definitely going to be good for the market uh, as well. There's one that I want to throw out here too uh, for, uh, let's see, for uh, Bernalda setup is the Wells Fargo. Uh, the Wells Fargo, as you guys uh, uh, may have heard or or last week you, you read in the news, you know, Buffett uh, disappeared out of the stock. Did he sell his whole position, Alex? He, he sold a big piece. He needed to do something else with it. But he's right. trying to kind of wash his hands of the scandal. Right. Um, but the reason he bought it is really the one. The reason why I'm watching this. I mean, uh, if anybody is kind of bearish interest rates, you know, one of the most effective ways to play that is to basically be long the banks. So one fun fact is for every percentage point that interest rates go up, Wells Fargo makes $144 billion more dollars just on interest deposits alone. So it's just one of those things that in a longer term type of trade that I'm looking at to be short interest rates, I'm looking for reasons, technical edge, to get long with names like Wells Fargo. So Right, right. And as you can see, the bottom worked out really, really well. Um, the sell put trade on the Wells Fargo worked out very, very well. Uh, I will say as as well on top of this, the flow in Bank of America uh, has been absolutely absurd. Bank of America actually was up, I want to say like 6%. Yeah, six percent or eight percent. I don't know what the hell it was. I think it was six percent at one point on the Bank of America, um, and again the flow just kept lining up, uh, and we saw again those risk reversals being played for October. So a lot of people out there selling puts uh, on the banks here, looking for another move back up to those highs, twenty-five bucks for Bank of America. I even saw lottos being bought in Goldman Sachs. For 250 bucks, 260 bucks today. You know, these guys are going right back to where all this shit started in the first place. Um, you know, so I think the free trade here that Alex and I want to throw out, considering all the flow that we've seen, considering how strong the indexes are, considering how strong uh, TF is, um, is to sell some freaking puts out here. Sell some puts on, uh, you know, some of these banks out here. And uh, I'm going to let Alex uh, set up a little bit of this trade for you. Yeah, either Wells Fargo or Bank of America. Try to try to try to look at you know 35, 40 days out. Give a little bit of room for juice, right. and you know my inkling would be to do a put spread just because I'm kind of a little risk adverse. I would look at getting maybe 30 cents for maybe maybe even 25 cents, depending on how aggressive I feel. Yep. I want to sell in here. Yep. Um, you got to do this probably pretty soon because all that um, French risk premium has sucked out today, yes. and I doubt there will be too much in it um, going forward. So, yes, yes, absolutely. I already uh, I'm short puts here on Goldman Sachs. Uh, Goldman had a little bit uh, a worse reaction, I would say, to the earnings than Bank of America did and J.P. Morgan did. I'm seeing a lot of buying, by the way, for J.P. Morgan. 
Um, you know, so this is another great name too. You'll get some fat premium on JP Morgan too. You can go out a couple months and still get premium for out of the money puts, let's say 83, 82, and you can just, you know, make a nice 20, 30 cents very easily, very low risk, you know, not a lot of, uh, you know, kind of hectic trading here. Um, you know, so look for, look for a dip here, sell some puts on the financials. Uh, that would be our free trade here, uh, uh, for the day. Last trade here that we want to set up, uh, is this IBM. This IBM has gotten smoked, uh, <laughs> recently here. Uh, and Alex is throwing out here a 720 minute signal. Uh, can we give them a little color on the 720 minute? How long does that usually last here? Can we give them a little right, color? Right, so, so uh, what we do is we actually try to divide the day, the time series that we're looking at in terms of a full day. So not not to be, not too many people understand 720 minutes is actually technically one half of a day. Right. So what's nice about these algorithms, the signals, is they'll actually do a double and even quadruple search on the bars. So... Um, you don't know if it's found a signal on a two bar bunch up or on a four bar bunch up. It already does that automatically. So this is technically a daily slash half daily signal. So it's it's pretty nice uh, type of signal for us to look at a potential put spread trade. Right. Um, another thing too is when you get these huge power gap downs, there's a lot of volatility that spikes. Uh, implied volatility. So when you set up a put spread trade, you can actually set it up a little bit further away from at the money, give yourself even more cushion, and you know what I mean? It just it just has a, a nice setup. Now, the, before I was using this technology, it was really difficult for me to like pull up a blank, blank chart and say, oh my gosh, the this stock is falling out of bed here. I'm going to go step in front of a, a, a razor blade or whatever, catch a falling knife. Right. With, with, with these signals, I have much more confidence that, you know, this is a high probability reversal area. Right. And it doesn't even need to go back up for us to, you know, right. see the profit. It actually can just stabilize. I've actually seen a lot of these put spread trades. The stock actually keeps going down maybe another dollar, but the implied volatility sucks out so hard that you can just cover your, your put spread or your puts uh, at a gain, you know, without even being directionally right. So that's kind of my, my – um, a right. little strategy there with those bottom extensions. Now, now, when there's not a lot of volatility, it's hard to find these things, especially in the large cap names. Um, so it's kind of a juicy one here. Now, uh, as far as the spreads go, when you get a signal like this, and by the way, this is all expertise that we bring to the table at, uh, in Turning Point Signal. So when you go ahead and subscribe to the product here, this is all stuff that is going to be done in the back end for you. And what you're going to get is access to our private Twitter feed, uh, and that way you can go ahead and get our signals here, whatever we're pushing out, whatever we're talking about. Um, and again, we'll curate the right strategy for you. Uh, trades will be kept right here. Go to marketinflections.com, uh, updated every week here. Uh, and again, you can see all this. Uh, you can see all the trades here that we're making. Um, and I believe we just done. We're just done with that promo here from last week. We're gonna try. Uh, I think we're gonna get another promo soon here. Uh, but again, go to marketinflections.com if you want to check it out. Um, and then, as far as the spread goes for IBM. You know, how far? How far would you go out, let's say? You said, that, you know, let's say you got a name like IBM where you go a month out here, maybe sell this 155 and go five points out and make it a make it a 155 by 150. How would you usually do that? Yeah, I usually do at least, probably in IBM, I'd look at at least five bucks. Um, Maybe even ten. I don't know. It depends on. I haven't looked at it. Right. But, you know, re re like. really, I'm just. I'm right. looking for what I would do. I. I don't have this same setup here, but I would look for the strike that's essentially the furthest away from at the money, uh, with the most implied volatility. So right. there's a couple tools that I basically use to look at that. But essentially, you want to look at the richness of maybe a few different strikes in comparison to each other. See if there's, you know, one that's better off than the other one. Right, um, right. Again, or the sweet spot is 40 days, right? 35 days? 
Yeah, yeah. For some of these signals, for me, depending on how much I like the name, depending on how much I like the market action, too, you know, that'll also dictate how aggressive I want to get. Like, for example, with Goldman Sachs, I'm pretty close to the money with this because, you know, I like the dip buy in the in the, in the the banks. So I'll go as far as 220 on this thing, you know, just because I like it that much, and it's worth the risk for me. Yeah, just scoot it up a bit. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's a good kind of play. Uh, the la last one I'll show, just a kind of an idea. I don't really didn't look at a trade for this, but um, I kind of like compression setups when there's a catalyst. And if you pull up Fox F O X A, this is kind of the thing that I I've seen some really good moves where there's some type of scandal and the stock price hasn't really moved yet. Obviously, the Bill O'Reilly falling out of bed with uh, with Fox is going to change a lot of the potential revenue streams for him, uh, given his departure. So there's a pretty fresh looking daily signal on this that even though the market's going up, if you're looking for an idea to balance out the portfolio, you know, it's not a bad idea to keep this one handy as a potential short idea. So I know with options, if you get too biased or too one-sided on it, you might as well just be trading the underlying. So this is kind of a, a setup here that I'm looking at. Nice, nice. All right, guys. Uh, any names here that you guys want us to, uh, to go ahead and look at for you? Uh, again, go to marketinflections.com here uh, and subscribe uh, to get, uh, you know, some, uh, some pretty sweet trades. We send two to three trades uh, every single week, and they're both equity. They're both options as well. We'll also throw some writing strategies in there for you too, uh, which is very big. I mean, uh, in case, uh, you know, again, some of you guys are uh, uh, writers out there. Usama is saying... Uh, the price line. He wants to take a look at the price line. We all, uh, you know, we had, we talked about the price line last week, and Bernal here was the one who caught it. There was a uh, compression here on price line, and this was pre-earnings. And for me, I freaking hate doing things before earnings, but you know, in reality, everything is a catalyst for something, right? I mean, all of a sudden, this market bounces back, and price line, what is? basically hits a new all-time high. So yeah, we were going to throw, I was actually going to throw out a straddle on uh, the price line or a strangle here uh, on the price line. I usually just dislike doing things like that before earnings, unless I'm in way before the options get priced out, similar to the Microsoft. I've been in Microsoft for a month now, and finally my, you know, my option premium is paying me well, Priceline here, if I was just to throw it out there, I mean, she's got earnings this week, I think. It's either this week or next week. It might be next week. Uh, you know, don't quote me on that one. But, Bernal, what do you think of the price line here, man? Yeah, you, you got this on my radar by showing me the Expedia. Oh. I, 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 kind of, uh, I kind of ignore some of the growth names sometimes, but I was watching a couple of these, um, and I thought that was an interesting setup. Again, you know, the context of where the signals show up is actually kind of just as important as the signals themselves. So, you know, it's one of those things where you get this kind of, whatever you want to call it, island gap up, and then yep. it recompresses. You know, it's, it's, it's already got a lot of energy stored in it from get power gap earnings, you know, yep. or whatever happened in March. Yep. That um, you know it's going to have a nice big move there. Yeah, uh, the uh, you know the analysts are still very bullish on this one. There's still nineteen hundred dollar price target. I think there's two thousand dollar price targets out on this thing too. Osama, I would say if you don't have a position right now, I would recommend that you you wait for earnings. If she doesn't report this week, sell some puts on this thing. You know what I mean? Sell sell like a seventeen sixty on this thing for this week. Sell like a seventeen seventy on this thing. Uh, you know, for this week and try to, uh, you know, try to just collect some premium here. And then after the earnings report, granted, you might miss 100 points. <laughs> but at least you're not going to get screwed by, uh, you know, by, by missing or being directionally biased on one direction. Again, I have horror stories with earnings, so I don't even mess with them. Uh, you know, again, everybody is different. Everybody is different. But this week we're going to get a lot of earnings. Uh, and so far, they've all been panning out pretty good, correct, Alex? I mean, so far, the yeah, no, we, you know, we saw we saw them all start to happen, you know, right before this whole French election thing, 
and now they're coming to fruition. So this is where, you know, watching these things unfold and taking some profits when you get them, but letting other ones, you know, give you a little bit more profit, uh, letting them move a little more is also, you know, recommended. Um, the signals, they're not just one and done ponies, you know, we're not technically out of the edge window and when, if it just moves two bars, you know, this thing should move at least 30 bars into one direction. Right. So just keep keep that in mind. Right, right, indeed. Any other names here that you guys want to throw out here? CV is saying, tell me you shorted or bought puts on ESRX. I did not. I don't even know what this name is. If it's a pharma name, I don't even – oh, Express. I'll, I'll tell you a story. I was actually long the ABC, which is in that same family group. Thank okay. God I wasn't long the Cardinal Health because that shit the bed 11% last week. That's what got me stopped out of the ABC, which – you know, in my model is the best of breed, but this whole uh, middleman pharmaceutical distributor area has got a lot of fleas, man. When they go after, uh, when the when Trump goes after the prescription industry, these are the guys who are going to get pinched the first. So um, I was not long the Espress scripts, but I've already puked out my ABC uh, position. We yeah. take losses too, guys. We take oh, losses yeah. too. All right, no doubt. You have to. That's the name of the game. So listen, there's still an open position uh, of your uh, free trade here from last week, the uh, the spy uh, straddle. Uh, and again, you can play it with the SPX. And in reality, again, we're still saying the move is going to be far more extended than what it already is. We still need to confirm that you know this gap will hold and everything. Remember Wednesday, you got the tax situation, which I don't think they're going to say much. But again, I didn't think the French election was that big of a deal anyway. So who knows here? So I would keep both sides of a spy straddle, if, if spy straddle, if you still got it. Free trades here for this week are short put spreads on some of the banks here. So you got your Goldman here, you got your Wells Fargo, JPM, uh, and you got your Bank of America here. A lot of good call flow that's coming into these names. Um, you know, XLF, a lot, of, a lot of buyers there on XLF. Anybody who has long these banks, I would suggest hanging on for a little bit here and seeing if the indexes have uh, uh, more legs here to the upside, which they probably should. Again, go to marketinflections.com uh, and you will get a nice, uh, you know, a couple trades here per week. Uh, mostly on uh, swing trade uh, setups here where you're going to be holding for a couple of weeks, but we do day trades as well uh, if there's some high probability uh, extremes here being, uh, 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 you know, being thrown out there. That Wells Fargo was a great example of one of them, uh, you know, or a couple of day trade, and then USO, you know, uh, uh, playing oil. Um, you know, this one has been a great, great day trade as well. Uh, and we're going to see these going forward here. We got another question here. Steven is saying, I'm usually inclined to sell the short side of the put spread uh, at or sometimes even slightly in the money to get the higher premium and set up closer to a one-to-one -one, uh, risk to reward scenario. Can you discuss why you don't do this? Uh, well, it's not really that we don't do this per se. I mean, I personally do. So, for example, on the Goldman Sachs, I started selling the 215 puts. Um, you know, so that was pretty close to the money. Steven, you know, sometimes it depends on who you are. It depends on what type of account you have. If you like a, uh, you know, if you're confident about a bounce, you know, you can get a little bit more aggressive about it. If you, uh, you know, if you want to hang back, if you want less stress, uh, you know, obviously your gains are going to be a little bit less, but, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. I usually put 100% uh, stop on my option. So if I sell something for a dollar, I will go ahead and cover it. Uh, for a loss at two bucks, and I'm looking to get the whole premium out of it. So I'm looking to do the same thing that you are, man. Uh, but if you have a larger account, guess what? You have the flexibility to just burn all this premium below these these uh you know these these sort of inflection points, and it's a really good strategy. You're just you're just scraping dimes and nickels, and you can really collect a lot of paper doing that. And I I, I would advocate anybody who has a larger account. Um, you know, to back off the in the monies, to back off, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff and take some of the easier money that's out there. Bernal here, what do you, uh, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, you got to remember volatility is not all the time. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, you know, years I remember where there ain't nothing to sell. So you got to get it while the iron's hot or whatever you want to call it. And um, just yeah. know, know where you have an edge, right? If you're just looking at the options, chances are, or if you're just looking at price or the options alone without any, you know, way of understanding 
uh, what an edge is, it's really random gambling to me. So you got, you got to know where your edge is, and you got to know how long the edge lasts before you it make is. better trades. And, and Alex, you know, just a perfect example of that is, you know, and, and I think we talked about this last week too, guys. If you're just watching price and you're just watching an option price, you know, how many of you guys would have tried to sell the top on this freaking Tesla and then you would have got whole, you would have got rolled over so many times. You would have kept going after it, kept going after it. And why? You know what I mean? Where's the edge here? Where is the edge? You're trying to pick a top on a name here that has, you know, is in the news all the time, that has short squeeze potential all over it. Uh, you know, there's, there's not that much edge there. So, again, where are you going to get that confidence? And the confidence that Alex and I are talking about is the confidence that comes from these signals here. Uh, you know, and that can give us just a much, much better place here to start looking at a at, at selling a put or selling a call, with taking into uh, you know context of price, taking into context of of options prices, volatility, and all that kind of stuff. And that's what we bring to the table with turning point signals here, so that you guys don't have to do a lot of that work, and we can give you some of that edge too. Otherwise. You know, you don't want to get you. You really don't want to get stuck here trying to find the top on a name like a Chipotle. Uh, you know, a breakout here. Um, you know, yeah, sometimes you might hit it, but other times you'll get rolled over. And when you get rolled over on an option, if you get stubborn and you're short an option, you know, and you let's just say you have a wide spread, it can get really ugly and it can get very stressful. And more stress means more mistakes and more decision making errors here. Uh, and you know, Bernal, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, you know, when you, when I first started trading options, I thought I knew everything, and I, you know, thought all my trades were going to be great. And then you blow up two or three times, and you go, "Holy shit! I need to control what I'm doing here." I mean, there's the leverage burns both ways, and so I find myself being much more selective and patient than I used to be with trading options. I actually will you know, really look for only a couple specific types of setups that, you know, they don't happen all the time. But I know there's enough of them in any given year that it's going to do do well for me. It's just waiting for those situations to happen. And right. not forcing right. trades, right? Not forcing right. trades is kind of the key. Right. And that's a huge component here of the service, turning point signals. Again, we don't push out that many alerts. We want to push out the good ones. We want to push out the juicy ones, the ones where I can connect to other disciplines, other forms of analysis, package it up for you guys and say, okay, you know, here's the right strategy if you guys are looking to play options, if you guys are looking to write options, if you guys are looking to play futures, if you guys are looking to just play the equity, what's the right hedge? You know, giving these things some time, some thought, uh, rather than and running out here and just gunning at the first thing that's moving. Um, you know, again, we want to bring that edge to you, uh, and that's what we're doing for you in Turning Point Signals. So again, go to marketinflections.com uh, and sign up. Sign up. Uh, price is two forty nine a month, uh, and again, you get your private Twitter feed, uh, and you get a newsletter and a lot of uh, uh, private content as well. Uh, all right, take care, guys. We will see you next week. Again, the free trade here is short your bank spreads. Short your puts. Short your short those puts. On your banks, you're looking for dips. You're looking for dips. You're looking for Goldman to come down a couple points or something, and that's when you want to scoop up uh, some short puts here. JPM, Wells Fargo, same scenario. And the spy straddle is still live. That is still a very live trade. Uh, and again, both Alex and I think the move here in the index is going to last quite a while. We don't know 100% that uh, it's going to be up or down. Uh, you know, we're pretty confident at the moment here. The upside looks pretty good. Who knows what will happen Wednesday here for the tax situation. So make sure you keep both sides of that straddle open. All right? Until you know. Until, let's say, SPY clears 238, 239, 240, then let the other one go and, uh, you know, and enjoy the gains. Enjoy the gains. All right, guys. Take care, and we will see you next week. See you later.